Shortly after the launch of Breath of the Wild, speculation and theory crafting began to circulate surrounding Luminous Stones and the potential hidden secrets that may still lie dormant within them. If we are supposed to take the description of this ore seriously, spirits of the deceased are said to be the reason why they glow in dimly lit areas, but this explanation just leaves us asking, why? Why would souls be embedded in these stones in the first place? Why did it seem like they shared some sort of unknown connection to the Zonai in Breath of the Wild? Why were they so heavily teased in Tears of the Kingdom's reveal trailer, and yet, upon full release, it kind of feels like any potential significance to the story they might have had was quickly swept under the rug? What exactly did Nintendo originally have planned for Luminous Stones? If you ask me, it seems like there were a lot of big ideas that they wanted to pursue with them, but ultimately they decided against it shortly after the initial reveal of Tears of the Kingdom. Or did they? What if I told you that the mystery of the Luminous Stones is still out there just waiting to be solved? That Nintendo actually didn't abandon their significance to the story after all? I think it's about time that we finally put to rest the uncertain fate of Luminous Stones. Let's begin with a quick recap as to why the Luminous Stones in Breath of the Wild seem to have a higher level of relevance to the Zonai than other collectible items. Back then, the only fragments of information that we knew about the Zonai came primarily from the book Creating a Champion, which revealed to us that the Zonai were an ancient warlike tribe that was highly skilled in magic. It is said that the Zonai suddenly vanished one day, which has become known as one of Hyrule's greatest mysteries. The abrupt disappearance of the Zonai is what ignited many passionate debates surrounding this peculiar event. Some theories speculated that the Zonai, given their strong affinity with magic, simply separated their souls from their bodies and became one with the Earth. For what purpose exactly? Nobody really knew, but this hypothesis did actually carry some weight because luminous stones were commonly found on their owl statues. This single detail formed a tangible enough connection between the Zonai and luminous stones which did happen to satisfy theorists enough to move on from the topic. If the Zonai were the ones whose souls now inhabit luminous stones, then the case is closed, right? Well, that's what we theorists wanted to believe, but there's also the other instances in which luminous stones were utilized in Breath of the Wild that left us still questioning everything. For example, the glow-in-the-dark radiant armor set is upgradable using luminous stones. A skeletal pattern reveals itself when worn in dimly lit areas and at night, which makes sense given the items needed to upgrade it. But the fact that this set is yet another reference to the afterlife only further solidified people's beliefs that luminous stones really did contain the souls of the Zonai tribe. In my opinion, I personally believe that this set is simply supposed to be a a pretty cool reference to a combination of Mexican cultures. The first being Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, which is a holiday that honors lost loved ones and relatives. The second being Lucha Libre, a form of freestyle wrestling in which the wrestlers often wear masks that depict ancient gods or spiritual animals. These two aspects taken from Mexican culture coming together is what most likely inspired the design of the Radiant set, so the potential for this to be more evidence of luminous stones and the Zonai being linked is highly unlikely. To make matters even worse, the entirety of Zora's domain is apparently just one big-ass luminous stone. In order for repairs to be made to the domain, Leto requires a large quantity of luminous stones, which suggests that the reason why Zora's domain glows in the dark in the first place is because it's all entirely made out of it. If that's the case, then that just made this place a lot less beautiful and a lot more creepy. As you can see, there wasn't really anything else in Breath of the Wild that involved luminous stones in any meaningful way other than being located on their owl statues, so unfortunately the evidence trail quickly went cold, but as you may already know, things wouldn't stay cold for very long. 
Fast forwarding to Tears of the Kingdom's reveal trailer, the evidence trail picked back up again after seeing the massive pillars of luminous stones along with the sheer abundance of them being seen in what appeared to be an ancient Zonai cavern. A lot of people rightfully assumed that Tears of the Kingdom would be heavily expanding on the lore of the Zonai and their potential connections with luminous stones, but that assumption only turned out to be half true. We did indeed get to see much more of the Zonai in their culture, but we got absolutely nothing new when it comes to luminous stones. Just like in Breath of the Wild, they are once again used to upgrade a couple of armor sets, and they can also be given to Dondons to snack on. Dondons are admittedly pretty interesting creatures, since their horns also emit a ghostly glow just like luminous stones, but that could just be primarily due to their diet only consisting of luminous ore. It seems like these creatures, most likely a leftover design from the reveal trailer, were functionally meant to to be a replacement for the repeatable side quest in Breath of the Wild that I mentioned earlier about giving luminous stones to Leto in exchange for diamonds. We do get to see some larger quantities of luminous stones in various locations, but other than that, we really didn't get to know anything new about them at all, which really bummed me out a little bit, as I'm sure it did for other theorists out there as well. The developers even went out of their way to remove the stones that were originally found attached to the owl statues in Breath of the Wild, so what's going on here? Did the developers have bigger plans for the luminous stones? or not? Well, I have taken some time to really think about this topic, and honestly, I was feeling pretty convinced for the longest time that the devs were leading us on a pointless wild goose chase, until the pieces of the puzzle slowly fell into place. Now that we have fully established all of the currently known instances in which luminous stones are utilized, we can finally begin diving into the unknown and find out once and for all what might be their true morbid purpose. Now, if these stones truly are filled with souls of the dead and they actually do share a connection with the Zonai, then I guess the obvious question for us to ask is, what happened to the Zonai and why did they suddenly disappear? Even during the era of Raru, the King of Light, what you would assume to be the peak of the Zonai's historical relevance, their race has already almost entirely vanished by this point. According to Ganondorf, the most trustworthy source of information of all time, supposedly only Raru and Minoru are all that remains of their people, which is then backed up by Raru himself, giving us a soft confirmation of this truly being the case. But why? What happened to them? Firstly, we must take into consideration the fact that we don't actually know how many Zonai originally descended upon Hyrule and made contact to begin with. If there were just a handful of them, then it wouldn't really be that big of a deal if there were only just two of them left. However, I actually do have evidence that heavily suggests there were much more of them than just a handful, but we'll get into those details soon enough. For now, let's focus on figuring out all that we can about the two remaining members of the Zonai race and see if we can learn anything new from them that might reveal what happened to the rest. Although Raru does occasionally share some fascinating details about Zonai culture, it's honestly his elder sister, Minoru, that I'd like to investigate the most out of the two of them. As the Sage of Spirit, she immediately comes across as a character of high interest when it comes to solving the potential connection between the Zonai and the Luminous Stones. She's an extremely intelligent woman who spends the majority of her time researching in her expansive library. She's also the one responsible for the creation of the constructs, the mining facilities, the forges, as well as even the Construct Factory itself. The Construct Factory was the culmination of Minoru's most important project. Its entire purpose was to assemble a brand and a new model of constructs, called crafter constructs, that were primarily built for unknown reasons. The only reason that was really given for their creation was so that Minoru's spirit would be able to inhabit one of these constructs in the case where she were to pass away, which is quite strange to think about and only raises even more questions. Minoru has tirelessly kept herself busy with all of these projects, but why does it seem like her interest mainly aligns itself with the mass production of these new types of construct? Why does she seem to already know that she will be needing to possess one of them. How is she so sure that she can even do that in the first place? The concept of a lingering spirit is nothing new in these games as plainly seen in Breath of the Wild, so the ability to live beyond the afterlife isn't exclusive to the Zonai or anything. But how did Minoru know that she could possess technology? Well, this is where things are about to not only get very interesting, but also pretty unsettling at the same time. So let's get down to business, shall we? 
all across the depths you will find wandering spirits of the deceased called Poes. Poes, regardless of the morality of their deeds during life, are delivered into the great beyond through the assistance of bargainer statues. In order for a bargainer statue to perform this function, they require all four of their eyes to be properly socketed, which they call vessels of their spirit. Upon closer examination, these eyes appear to be extremely similar to the material as seen in larger deposits of luminous stone. This particular bargainer statue claims to have had its eyes stolen from it and sealed away, but by who and for what purpose? The answer to that question can be found on the stone tablet located in Lookout Landing. Depicting the great abandoned central mine, we can clearly see Raru himself paying it a visit, possibly even overseeing the construction of the facility. Now that we know that Raru was once within the vicinity of the bargainer statue that lost its eyes, how else can we confirm that he was the one responsible for taking them? Well, thankfully, a friend of mine and a brilliant fellow content creator, Pixel Fusion Productions, has made a very interesting observation that can help us pin this crime on Raru. Shrines of Light were created by Raru for the purpose of stealing away and cleansing evil. Four of these shrines used to be located on the Great Plateau, but now there are four chasms in their place. Sitting just on the edge of these chasms are the four eyes that were stolen from the Bargainer statue. This heavily suggests that the upheaval destroyed the light roots connected to the Shrines of Light, leaving a massive chasm behind. But this also suggests that the eyes were being held captive inside of those four shrines. This just leaves us with the question, why was Raru holding on to the Bargainer statue's eyes in the first place? Did he do this at the request of Minaru? perhaps? If so, then was she studying these so-called spirit vessels in order to gain a better understanding of the afterlife? Who knows for sure, but what we do know now is that the material these eyes are made out of are without a doubt the same material found on the larger collections of luminous ore. However, you might have noticed the complete absence of this ore in the depths. If luminous ore is supposedly filled with souls of the dead, then why isn't this stuff all over the place down here? One admittedly quite odd suggestion could be the method the bargain statues use when sending them into the afterlife might simply be absorbing them into the earth itself, thus causing them to slowly work their way up to the surface and emerge as luminous stones. This is of course highly speculative, but it's the only reason I can think of other than Don Don's cleaning out the entirety of the depths or something. Your guess is as good as mine here, but I don't think that we're done talking about the larger deposits of luminous ore just yet. Among many other things, Minoru was also responsible for orchestrating the ascent of several chunks of land into the sky, but to what extent is currently unknown. It seems that a large majority of Sky Islands were originally located on the surface, but when it comes to some of them, it would make a lot more sense if they were always in the sky, such as the Dive Ceremony Islands. Another type of island that appears to have potentially always been in the sky are these seemingly random large deposits of luminous ore. It looks like these massive chunks were excavated from the Earth and immediately sent into the sky, but if they weren't sent into the sky until after Zelda underwent draconification, then why would the four remaining sages specifically send these up into the air along with everything else they sent. These huge luminous stone chunks must have held significant value to someone for some reason. So was this also part of Minoru's plan? Were they that crucial to her research? Or, make sure you brace yourself for this one. What if these were actually being used as graveyards of sorts for deceased Zonai, a place where Minoru could temporarily store the souls of her dwindling race while she attempted to find a way to restore them? As another brilliant content creator, Kokiri Theory, has suggested, it seems like Minoru's true goal this whole time, shockingly, might have been the pursuit of obtaining a form of immortality itself. In a desperate attempt to save her race from extinction, Minoru sought to mass-produce a automatons that would serve as worthy vessels for the spirits of the Zonai to inhabit. The plans for this operation might have already been known by the Zonai before their numbers began to plummet, which could explain why we see spirits already lining up against the wall in the spirit temple as if they were patiently waiting to be placed into their designated construct body. The entire reason why the Zonai descended from the heavens in the first place might have been to save their own race, harvesting the necessary materials in order to fulfill Minoru's plan. With total annihilation for the Zonai race rapidly approaching, Minoru was racing against the clock to do whatever it took to prevent their legacy from being lost to time, forever. Unfortunately for her, time is a primordial evil that nobody can ever hope to defeat. 
Typhlo Ruins is said to have been built to honor the great sacrifices made by the ancient sages who stood their ground against the Demon King. The luminous stones that were once seen decorating the eyes of the owl statues in these ruins in Breath of the Wild could have been a sign of the civilization of Hylians that followed the aftermath of that great battle showing their respect for the incredible leaders that once ruled over them. A simple and kind-hearted gesture of remembrance that although gone, the Zonai will always remain with them in spirit. Let's just hope a rogue Don Don didn't come strolling through the area and eat everything. A big shout out goes out to Pixel Fusion Productions and Kokiri Theory for their amazing work on their videos. They are extremely talented creators and I highly recommend checking out their channels. They truly deserve it. Links to their videos will be down in the description below. A massive thank you goes out to my Heroes Shade tier YouTube members, Florian, Jonesy G, Dr. Marble, and Game Trekker. You are all bonafide legends. If you haven't already, please consider becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter to help fund more sponsorship free content just like like this. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, there is much more to come in the future, so please subscribe and stick around for another onslaught of Zodalore from Gossip Geist.